Oh, you, man. Did you know about this or from ahead of time? Or? I found out yesterday. El Machetero sent me an email, and um, yo, it's you know, I had to cancel something to be here, man. Yeah. This is the you know, this blood and seed of Malcolm X. Man, I, I'm stuttering because I can't yeah. believe what an amazing moment this is.
teachers in classrooms all across America taught that black people had no history or culture before the African diaspora. Men who were the same age as my father have told me that the one of the greatest gifts of Malcolm X, El Haj Malik Shabazz, was that he told them that they did, in fact, have a history. Brother Malcolm read everything you could imagine. Newspapers, magazines, biographies, histories, the dictionary, the encyclopedia, anything on which he could get his hands. And he had a wide range of interests, the classics, anthropology, African history, the origins of religion, anything by or about people of color. He was so widely read and so brilliant that he was able to truthfully educate a miseducated nation about its history. My father echoed that black-skinned people were not substandard or subhuman and should not subscribe to a second-class lifestyle. Taj Malik Shabazz, Malcolm X, raised the consciousness of humanity to understand that our poor parents were not simply slaves, but were, in fact, African people in bondage who had, in fact, built those great civilizations whose stories are erroneously reconstructed and depicted even to this day. He taught us that long before there was a Harvard or a Yale, there was the University of Timbuktu, there was the University of Alexandria, and that learned it and distinguished African men conferred degrees upon citizens of the world. And it was they who were dispersed around the globe in bondage. You see, when Africans of the diaspora were at our lowest point, oppressed, miseducated, misled, and psychologically traumatized. Hmm. After 400 years of bondage, my father had the courage and the compassion to stand up for us and challenge a governmental system that perpetuated injustice and thrived upon the systemic miseducation of its citizens. Certainly you must ask yourselves, why on earth would anyone have gone through such measures to destroy such a past? And we must equally question, why would Africans have been kidnapped and taken across the Pacific Ocean on a voyage that could take months before landing in the so-called New World if such a people were so limited in their abilities as our history books have led the world to believe? And it's really our responsibility to do something about that. The land and resources of Africa were stolen to make poor nations in the New World wealthy, and that's most notably Britain, Portugal, France, and later Italy and Germany. And we must address, and these are all very small countries in comparison, and so we must address these issues if we are to address social justice and if we want to provide a nurturing, healthy environment for our children. I read back in April 2006 about Italy finally returning the stolen Axum Obelisk to Ethiopia, and I quote, a decade-long battle with Italy for the return of an ancient religious monument over 2,000 years old ended with the return to Ethiopia of the last fragment of looted treasure. It represents a symbol of African civilization stolen by European troops as a war prize. Imagine that, because this was something that was very sentimental to the people. It was part of their history, their culture. You know, I, I believe it had something to do with uh, Queen of Sheba. You know, it's a, a stellar uh, funeral piece. And so the European troops stole it as a war prize. The Ethiopian president, Germa Wold Georges, in 2006 said that this is the land of our Queen of Sheba and the obelisk belongs here. The prime minister added that the obelisk monument is a symbol of identity. And this return of Ethiopia's historical artifacts will bring about a major change of attitude in those countries that have African treasures that do not belong to them. And so in conclusion, I say to you, 
If you see injustice, inequality, and a lack of freedom anywhere, then understand the struggle is not over. Understand that we need you. I need you. And if you do not stand for something, you will, in fact, fall for anything. But if you're willing to stand for something, then you will commit yourself to giving back.